good. Okay, everybody, um, here we are at the Wamanala Gulch Sanitary Landfill. The recess is ended and the meeting will now come to order. It is 2.39. Okay, so doing our site tour at this location is Tina. Tina, sorry, I don't know your last Alder. name. Alder. Hi, I'm Tina and I'm the district manager here at Wamanala Gulch. So welcome to the landfill. Um, let's give you, I know you guys are running a little behind, so I will make this quick too. Um, this is the most recent aerial photograph, so if you want to come in closer to, you can come in and look. Um, at the photo. <laughs> this right now, right down here, is where we're at. So you can see the landfill is quite extensive. And so we're at about 60 feet above mean sea level at this location. And when you come to up in this corner, we're about a thousand feet. So. It is a canyon fill, so you will see a nice grade as we go up, um, as we work our way through. The original ash monofill, which is where we take all the ash from H power. The very first one was here. And our first um, trash, where we put the municipal solid waste, was here. We're now back here for trash and back here for ash. So we'll be driving all the way to back to the landfill, and you'll get to see how the two systems are separated with cells. Um, also on this map, you can see the green areas. That is the liner. So as we go up the side slopes, we do line. And you can pass this stuff around a little bit. You want to help with that. These are the lining materials. Um, we take these materials and we lay them down twice, the sequencing. Um, so that way, if anything should ever puncture the liner, you have a second layer of stuff to stop. Anything ever getting into the uh, surrounding groundwater or their environment. We also have several um, monitoring things uh, around the landfill. One being groundwater monitoring wells. So those are monitored and samples are collected twice a year. And we compare that against collect samples from the leachate, make sure we're not seeing any of those leachate components in the groundwater. And we have not ever seen anything like the landfill. The landfill's been here since 1989. We also have perimeter gas wells gas pros more so to speak. Um, and those are monitored on a quarterly basis so that we can see if we're seeing any gases escaping. And we don't pick up detections on those. Um, as we're going up, you will see what we call little toothpicks sticking out of the landfill. Those are the ga gas extraction wells. So they are pulling on the gas, and all that gas is brought down to the flare. And as we go up, you'll see the flare off to the right. The flare does burn at 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit, so it does burn off almost all of the methane. We also take the condensate, which is the, the water that comes off because the gas is really hot. And as it comes up the surface, you get that cooling, so it's kind of like a glass of water with ice to expose you get that condensation. All the condensation is dumped into a tank that's also injected into the flare and burned off. Um, what else we got? Stormwater, lots and lots of stormwater controls. Uh, off to your right is our detention basin, so all the stormwater is collected. On this map, it's right here. Um, you'll see the basins there. Right now, they're completely empty, but if they're full, we do have a skimmer system that is dropped down, and just the top part of the water is skimmed off, and that's discharged. That is to keep from sediments and that sort of thing to stay here and not leave and go out to the ocean. Anything of anything else? Yeah, I can add some facts and figures. Um, the first stop we'll have is the scale house. So the scale house has three lanes. The nearest lane closest to us is for the public. The public brings in about 10 loads a day, and it's usually a pickup truck with dirt, rock, concrete, drywall from their home. The next lane is the scale. So using the scale, they take the weight of their trucks. Uh, full weight, the truck goes up and dumps, comes back down and around, and the scale house takes the empty weight. By the weight difference, they can tell the tonnage to do the transaction. The tipping fee is $81 a ton commercial, plus recycling surcharges. There's about 10 to 15 loads a day that scale in. Most of those are loads from the recyclers who are bringing in recycling residue, like auto fluff from uh, Schnitzer Steel and Island Recycling. And then the furthest lane is the bypass lane for ash trucks from H-Power. 
HCAR brings in about 20, 25 ash trucks every day. HCAR brings in up to 400 truckloads a day by combusting the waste, reduces the volume 90%, and that results in the 20 to 25 ash trucks. So on a normal day, we'll be waiting for a while before a truck shows up. We could be waiting half an hour for one truck. That's a, that's a pretty normal day here. I think that's all I got. Um, in the interest of time, I guess we have a few minutes for questions, and then we'd like to continue the tour and Q&A on the bus. Yeah, I can add a little bit about leachate. So we collect leachate. Leachate is the rainwater and moisture in the trash that percolates its way through. It can go down. Uh, some cells are 200 feet deep. So the water percolates down, it's collected. There's five 20,000 gallon uh, leachate storage tanks on the site. Uh, we contract out the leachate hauling to PCS. They bring in tanker trucks. They hook up to the tank, fill up the tanker, and they haul all the leachate to the Honolulu Wastewater Treatment Plant. Uh, so all the leachate is collected from the site and goes through the wastewater treatment process. That's roughly a, maybe 50,000 gallons a month, but it fluctuates with rainfall. Um, yeah, uh, it can fluctuate. Typically, um, sometimes we've seen it up into the hundred and some thousand gallons as well. Um, if we've had some marine events, but we'd usually do about three and a half to four million gallons a year is what's generated out here. So one of the things to emphasize with leachate, you, when you build a landfill, you usually want to be on the dry side. So, cause you don't want to have that incurred cost of transporting and addressing a whole lot of leachate. So the rainier you are, the more leachate you're going to generate. Questions? Steve Chang, um, are you accepting sewage sludge here? We do accept some. Most of it goes to H Power um, to be incinerated. Um, but there are some that can't really go there, like the grits, that sort of thing. So we do take stuff. Anybody else? Yeah. group. Get on the bus then.
And the toothpicks, those are the gas collection wells. You'll see them throughout. So we'll be coming up on some more of those. They look like toothpicks sticking out of the ground. That's how all the gas is collected from 100 up to 200 feet below. On the left is the historic Battery, Arizona. That's a vintage World War II concrete bunker. And underground, there's dozens of rooms. Uh, during the war, there was a plan for the military to mount the USS Arizona's, uh, one of their main guns, on top of that, we're going to call it the Battery Arizona. But a similar facility on Kaneohe site test fired a gun and it cracked the concrete. So that sent them running back to the drawing board, but then the war ended. So the Arizona's gun never made it to this site. That would have been part of the coastal defense network during the war. On the left, this is Pine Ridge. This is Pine Ridge's rock crushing and screening operation. So during the uh, expansion of the landfill in the roughly eight, nine years ago, uh, the cells were excavated. All the excavated material was stockpiled. And over time, we're working our way through all that material, crushing and screening it. We use it for uh, operations material when we open a new cell and line the cell up at the bottom and up the slopes. We also use it to create daily cover material to cover the no, crash at the end of the day. Coming up on the water truck, we use the water truck for dust control. This is the, the maintenance shop area. Yeah. Yeah. This is the maintenance shop area where the heavy equipment is parked and uh, worked on to do the 
the repairs, uh, preventative maintenance, oil change, stuff like that. If you look to the left and down the hill, you can see the staff for Hiko's Kahe power plant and another leachate storage tank. Hiko has a large crew on site right now. Uh, on the left, you can see the plane and a lot of their work trucks. They're working on the power poles. So they, they periodically come out to inspect the poles and the power lines and they do repairs and maintenance as needed. Um, from time to time we also have helicopter flyovers where they're inspecting the, their structures and the power lines.
Is there any questions so far? Anybody? As we work our way back down, obviously there's going to be some really nice views um, <clears throat> that we have here. So I do say that we have the prettiest land, so anybody? Oh, that's good view. <laughs> yeah, that's good views. Right yeah. Yeah, because of the really nice views, we have a 270 degree wraparound view at Pahe Point, the ridge on the right. So every spring we partner with Noah for the humpback whale counts. So Saturday, Saturdays in January, February, we're up here counting the whales as part of the Noah effort. Can you repeat my question? Since I don't have a mic right now, what elevation are we relative to PDT? So the question is, uh, what elevation are we relative to PDT? Um, I would say in here we're probably around 600 um, feet above mean sea level. It's really late in here. a little bit. Um, Ahmad asked me to touch on the special waste that comes in. Um, we can get a wide range of things, but we can get the uh, treated medical waste that comes in. Uh, like I mentioned, the auto shredder residue is one of our biggest ones that we get. Uh, there's grits and screens. There's stuff off of like the refineries, that sort of thing, that they clean the tanks with. Um, I think what else? We are taking asbestos now as well since PPT quit taking it. Uh, and we only schedule that one day a week and they have a certain time frame in which they need to come in with it. Same with any load that is odorous. Those loads have to come in between 8.30 and 2.30. Most of them we try to get in before noon so they can get buried because as you can see right now at this time of day we're not getting a lot of trash or anything coming in. So most everybody's brought everything to us by around lunchtime. So we try to get most everything in so everything can get buried. Um, we don't really, we don't get a lot of truck traffic and we don't get a lot here. Um, and there's really no odors and back here. Nobody smelled anything, I don't think. Um, the gas wells, if you're operating your gas wells like you're supposed to efficiently, um, you shouldn't get any odors. Yeah, so we do also use temp laborers to um, do all the litter picking, so they do go around. So if you saw any black trash bags in around, the litter pickers are around picking those up. And then we pick them up at the end of the day. Um, we have fencing and screening, things like this, so that the trash, if it does get wind blown, um, that it gets caught up into that fencing, and then we collect it out of there and gets thrown away at the end of the night. Uh, Moderate kind of touched on the water truck going around for dust control. So that water truck does run throughout the day. As you can see, it's pretty dry out here. And uh, we haven't had much for rain at all this year. And so we do get, it gets, just kind of gets a little dusty just because it's so dry. Back in the ash monofill, when they were doing that cell construction, all of that material was stockpiled down here where we were talking about the Pine Ridge operation. So all of that material got stockpiled down here and then they process it for use for us at the landfill. So when we do lining projects, all the materials that we need are generated from previously excavated materials. So we do try to reuse everything we can on the landfill and not export.
passing out of the landfill or going backwards in time again. So this is again the probably the early 2000s. Um, the cell on the left is uh, original municipal solid waste uh, from the early 2000s, and it's been it has the intermediate cover on top. Uh, if the landfill uh, were able to remain open beyond 2028, the plan would have been to fill the lower areas. So over time, cells in the landfill do settle, and there's still some airspace that can be reclaimed. The plan would have been to fill those little areas and warp our way back out of the site. Um, also, the note on that same topic is that all the roads on the landfill are built over trash. So trash was placed at one point in time from here um, or in the back to over ash. So all of our roads are constructed over previously placed um, materials. So also, like, you would normally work your way out and you would also fill in those loads. And if you miss it the first time, off to the right is the Arizona bunkers. You can see the concrete structure sticking up. considerable difference in the amount of you know plastic bags flying around you mentioned the, the litter pickers um, yes we do well we don't get a lot of that kind of trash here um, we do if there is a diversion from H power and I can tell you that's the vast majority of what we have to pick up is the plastic bags and it can get pretty bad if we're doing taking those as diversions yes. and then the second question oh I'm sorry go ahead yeah, I can add on the tonnage side, since 2007, the landfill receives 85% less trash. So in 2007, the MSW, the municipal solid waste coming here was about 300,000 tons that year. And now a normal year is down to 50,000 tons. So it's been reduced by 85% since 2007. Uh, thank you. Uh, second question. With the area being so dry, any issues with fires? Um, we, in particular, have not. Um, our neighbors to us, uh, the power plants, a few years back when the hurricane was coming in, uh, the power lines through the wind did strike, did cause a, a grass fire, did come through the canyon, um, and it actually came up this hill right back over here and over by the Arizona bunkers too. We were moving equipment and making some fire breaks here to ensure that anything came on here, um, it would be a big issue if it did come on because of the gas. So we, we do try to uh, um, contain anything that might come here. But that's really about what we see. We usually see it go up through the canyon and then it would come up, back up and around and come across if it was, but they usually get it out before then. Oh, yes, and as far as any trash fires, um, we have recently stalled in cameras around the landfill we do have a couple that are infrared so they do pick up on any smoke or fire and that sort of thing um, there are people that smoke or fire and that sort of thing um, there are people that monitor those cameras after hours so if there was ever a fire after hours that I would be immediately notified in the fire department just deployed as well so that was something we've done in the last two years Let's put those in Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Here we go. All right. Well, you guys enjoy the rest of your tour and you have a good rest of your day. Okay, Tina, thank you so much for your time.
questions or discussions at this time? If not, is there a motion to recess? Jimmy, motions? Do I have a second? Emmett, second. Any objections? If there are no objections, the committee stands in